Hi there, in this video we're going to discuss another plan of attack for whites in the London system based on the active operations in the center. Let's have a look. d4, knight f6, knight goes to f3, e6, bishop goes to f4, c5, e3, d5, c3, knight to c6, knight goes to d2, bishop goes to d6, bishop stabs back to g3, we have discussed this in the previous video. Castling, bishop goes to d3 and b6. So we have already analyzed knight to e5 in the previous video. In this one, we're going to focus on the interesting and sharp e4 continuation. At very first glance, it looks like a premature action because white is not castled and is trying to open up a position in the center. But in fact, we can see that white needs only one move to castle in case there is a real danger uh, against the king. Uh, for now though, it's quite unclear how black is going to uh, exploit the position of the king on e1, so this e4 looks absolutely playable. What is the point here? Well, there is a direct threat of just playing e5. Exchange of bishops is still not good for black because in that case h file will be opened and white will start a simple attack against the king. So black should do something against this threat of e5 and the most natural continuation that comes to mind here, uh, which is to take the pawn, is not necessarily that pleasant, although it is more or less playable. So knight captures on e4 here, uh, black should most likely recapture because bishop is under attack, there is a threat of taking on c5. So after that bishop recaptures, attacking the knight, knight is pinned, and quite vulnerable. Bishop goes to b7. Here white has different options. One of them is simple d captures c5, attacking the bishop on d6, and black should recapture with the bishop on c5, because if black does something like bishop takes g3, then again after h takes g3, the pawn h7 will be under attack, and even if that problem is solved, for example, at some point black has to recapture on c5, and the pawn structure will be damaged. I mean, recapture with the pawn, obviously, if the bishop is missing already. So, bishop takes c5 is more or less forced here, and white may continue with the queen to a4 move, attacking the knight and preparing rook to d1 move. Everything is more or less forced here, as you can see, and after something like rook to c8, rook to d1, and uh, queen to e7, for example, uh, black will have problems with the bishop. So, already here, uh, White may consider some like b4 move, simply attacking the bishop. We can see that bishop has no moves to go away. Uh, everything is under control. So I'm not saying that white is winning necessarily. So this position requires definitely additional analysis because here white has some tricks based on uh, sacrificing the minor piece for two pawns. Uh, in many cases, black starts with f5. This counter-attacking move first. Then once the bishop is away, the knight takes b4 and this sort of stuff. But in general, even if white doesn't play before immediately and simply castles preparing this before, starts looking a bit annoying uh, for black. That's why I believe that capturing on e4 is not the best reaction. So let's have a look what to do in that position. So if d takes e4 is not that great and there is a threat of e5, black probably has to do something against that. And uh, the only logical move that comes to mind is just to step back with the bishop to e7. And now we can notice that uh, black has in mind to capture on d4, maybe to create an isolated pawn there first, then capture on e4 uh, and uh, basically get normal play after completing the development with the bishop b7 move. So that's at least the plan. There is a pressure in the center, what has to take this into account. Uh, but the idea behind e4 was just to play e5, so normally white continues with the e5. And uh, now as you can see we get the pawn structure uh, which uh, resembles the French defense with some differences here. So at very first glance uh, white is doing really well because black failed to attack the d4, queen cannot go to b6, bishop doesn't have a clear perspective here, the knight is forced to at very first glance super passive position either on e8 on or on d7. So uh, the things are going really well for white at first glance, but uh, black has an interesting knight to h5 move. At very first glance it looks strange to go to the edge of the board, but there is a concrete idea behind it just to capture the bishop on g3 at the right moment. Right now it's not good for the same reason uh, 
like uh, with the exchange of dark squid bishops on g3 because after h takes g3 the h file will be open and there is no defender of the h7 anymore so white will have an easy attack but uh, black will keep the knight on h5 here for as long as it is needed and will capture the bishop only at the moment when it is good uh, what uh, i'm trying to say here is that bishop has no moves right so why cannot uh, just keep the bishop on the board save it somehow because whenever white tries to do something like moving the h pawn black is ready to take because in that case h file uh, remains closed so there is no chance for white to uh, directly disturb the knight on h5 right now black can also protect it with the g6 so yes it looks a bit strange a bit non-standard but it's absolutely playable so after knight to h5 white has two interesting options here uh, let's start with uh, something typical for French defense. Uh, at the moment, uh, black may consider taking on d4, let's say, and after cd4, knight may go to b4 with a subsequent bishop to a6, which is not good for white. That's why one of the options, which is pretty logical, is just to play a3 to control that square, uh, also intending to play b4, just like in French defense. So for black, it's important to prevent that. I would say that playing some like c4 in this position will be not correct because in that case bishop just steps back so uh, in french defense uh, if you remember from uh, our other videos uh, if you play c4 the bishop is somewhere on f1 or e2 so uh, white has problems with activating it here it is already on this diagonal pretty good one attacking h7 so I don't think c4 makes sense after that this bishop is super passive and I don't see a clear plan for black what to do so yeah there is a plan of attack like b5 a5 b4 it will take time while white will uh, just uh, improve his position on the king side I would say that white's attack on the king side looks much more realistic compared to what black can achieve on the queen side that's why I don't think that closing the position with a c4 is a good decision right now and instead black should prefer playing a5 just stopping white from playing b4 and preparing positional bishop a6 uh, which will be just a perfect exchange of a bad french like bishop so white responds with the queen e2 controlling a6 square also very logical and now it's time for black to think of what to do next again there is no play on the queen side at the moment so probably it makes sense to uh, do something with the e5 pawn another typical french uh, like method of uh, dealing with this is to undermine it with the f6 for now it's not really prepared because knight on h5 is a bit vulnerable so there may be some tactics based on that so normally black starts with the g6 move which is universal for these positions it's not only about protecting the knight it also creates a room for the knight just in case it is attacked let's say a bit later with the g pawn or something and it closes the uh, b1 h7 diagonal so that white cannot directly attack h7 Knight goes to f1 here, that's a typical uh, stop, so it's a preparation of the h4 move at some point. Uh, another idea is knight to e3, so white is a preparation of uh, h4, because in that case if we take on g3, white recaptures not with the pawn damage and own pawn structure, but with the knight, which is very logical and very harmonious. So uh, black normally uh, responds with uh, the bishop d7 move, since there is no square on a6 d7 looks like uh, another choice uh, well it's not super active but at least the coordination uh, of black pieces is being improved here after this move white continues with the h4 one of the examples so as i said now if black captures the bishop white recaptures with the knight and is ready to continue the attack with the h5 which starts looking very annoying so instead of doing that i think uh, black should uh, prefer f5 move so typical stuff if white doesn't capture right now then it will be really hard to achieve anything on the king side there's also a threat of just playing f4 locking the bishop somewhere on the h2 position which is very passive and um, this f4 may um, enable maneuver like knight g7 knight f5 attacking d4 at some point so it's better for white just to capture and after that black recaptures with the bishop so now uh, position on the king side is weakened for sure so this is not very stable formation uh, according to my experience but black has some counterplay uh, in the center we may notice this d4 
uh, finally becomes an object of attack. Uh, black may think of playing e5 at some point, but for now it doesn't feel very realistic because white has a great control over uh, this square. Uh, so the current threat is just to take on d4. You may ask what is going on to the c5 because since bishop uh, left the f8 a3 diagonal, it's possible to play bishop to d6. So at very first glance, it's super annoying, attacking the rook, attacking the pawn, if it goes away, white simply captures the pawn. Uh, but in this particular case, uh, black decides to sacrifice the exchange. So typical stuff for French defense, positional exchange sacrifice, pawn captures on d4, and appears that whenever white captures the rook, there is a possibility to bring the knight to f4. Attacking the queen, grabbing the light squared bishop, and since the king is still in the center, just imagine what happens if black's dark squared bishop gets to diagonal a6, f1. So the king will have serious problems with castling. Castling lawn is also not so safe because all the light squares are weakened there. So that's basically uh, the basis of black's compensation for missing exchange. White may try something smart like g4 attacking the knight first and if the knight goes to g7 true white just captures on f8 and there is no uh, knight to f4 anymore but black has another super tricky and good looking move mm. bishop to c8 attacking the bishop on d6 and literally forcing white to make a decision if bishop simply goes away then okay black is a material up and knight can simply step back to g7 no problems and if bishop finally captures on f8 then there is this knight to f4, queen goes away, knight captures on d3 with check, queen captures, now another intermediate tempo move, bishop to a6, attacking the queen and occupying this nice diagonal, and after queen goes away, queen captures on f8, so white has extra exchange, but black has amazing uh, counterplay based on the domination in the center and the attack against the king. So if white captures on d4 now, for example, black may consider something like e5 immediately or after uh, something like rook e8, preparing it a bit. So I believe this position is good for black. Uh, let's get back to uh, the uh, position after uh, knight to h5 and see how white can directly uh, continue with the attack on the king side. In this position, white has another interesting resource. It is uh, actually knight to g5 jump. Uh, the point is white is attacking uh, h7 and at the same time the knight on h5. So it may look like uh, how can this be a problem if black can play something like g6, but in this case uh, white can simply capture the pawn on h7 and uh, black's position is completely destroyed on the king side because if king takes, then queen simply captures the knight using the fact that g6 pawn is pinned. So after knight to g5, black uh, has no choice basically, so uh, black can take the knight, in which case white captures on h5, attacking the pawn on h7. This position is uh, very interesting and quite complicated in my opinion, so uh, it's uh, clear that something like h6 will not work, well, because white will have a four move, very simple, forcing the bishop to e7. And now this h6 will be a hook for the future attack. Uh, there may be different patterns, uh, but it's clear that white is having no problems with developing this attack on the king side. I would say that the easiest way that comes to mind right now is something like bishop f2, uh, preparing g4 and g5, but white may try something else as well. I don't think it's a good idea for black because it starts feeling like a one-sided position. I don't see a counterplay on the other side of the board. So h6 is not an option. What to do then? Uh, another move that comes to mind is just to take on d2 with check, but in this case, although the king gets to d2, it's fine. White has pair of bishops, pawn on h7 is still hitting. Well, once again, this h6 is not good, so this h6 will be very vulnerable. And playing something like g6 in this position is just a suicide because it weakens all the dark squares. Black's dark squared bishop is no longer on the board, which means that uh, very soon the bishop will go through h4 to f6 and white will create uh, decisive checkmate in threats. So this is also not uh, what black is going to do in this position. Feels like the only way to respond here is just to play g6 with a tempo, in which case queen steps back to e2. 
And here we enter a quite popular Tabia. Uh, nowadays it is uh, uh, being tested on different levels, including Grandmaster level. So Black has two uh, different options in this position. So the one is to accept the sacrifice because as we can see pawn on d4 is actually hanging, which means uh, giving white a chance to continue the attack uh, with the tempo because white is going to play this. That was the whole point behind forcing this g6 move just to create this hook and then to play h4, h5 and try to open the h file to continue the attack. And another option is to try to come up with some sort of prophylaxis here on the king side. So let's have a look at the uh, option which uh, gives black some, uh, in my opinion, better defending chances on the king side. So it is f5 move. Uh, that is something that I have played myself. Uh, it leads to a uh, not very active position. Uh, indeed, it is uh, in many cases just uh, closed uh, and white has uh, his chances on the king side still, but uh, black has a lot of uh, defensive resources because after pawn went to f5, you can see that the seventh rank is empty and now black can use heavy pieces to uh, protect most critical uh, squares, uh, for example, h7 with the help of something like rook f7 or queen c7 or even a5 and rook a7. So there are different methods to connect heavy pieces to the defense of the king side. Um, the first thing is uh, about uh, e captures uh, f6. Well, here I think uh, black has no serious problems now because after bishop takes f6 or queen takes f6, in my opinion, just a question of taste mainly, uh, black has this uh, d4 pawn as a direct target. Uh, there is no even bishop d6 or something that we have seen in uh, other lines. So uh, I don't see how white is going to keep this pawn on the board. And it doesn't feel like white has super easy attack on the king side anymore, because just imagine we play something like h4, h5 at some point. So black may react with the g5, which is uh, very dangerous, for example, if you don't have a chance to protect h7. But as I said before, now the seventh rank is empty, so we can easily protect h7 in case it is attacked. So capturing uh, on Paso here doesn't really work for white, uh, at least doesn't work well. So the main direction is f4, uh, bishop goes to e7. And uh, as you can see, uh, if white at some point plays something like h4, black may even consider something, well, like h5, right? So it doesn't look very inspiring because black is uh, just defending, but I don't think that this defense is uh, anything bad, in fact, because I don't see how white is going to break through after something like this, for example. But black still has some chances on the other side of the board. So white's main plan of attack should be connected somehow with the g4 move. So white should prepare it gradually. For that, the bishop has to uh, go away from g3, then probably casting or something, king h1, rook g1, and then at some point g4. So this means black will have time for counterplay on the other side of the board and for some defensive measures on the king's side. Knight f3 looks very natural after f4, protecting d4, so uh, white is not sacrificing anything anymore. And once again, here black has a choice between two uh, principally different approaches. In one of my games against Nicholas Huschenbett, I played c4, and uh, after bishop to c2, I decided just to expand on the queen side like this, a3, bishop to d7, castling a5, and uh, after bishop to f2, just b4. So as we can see, uh, black is a bit faster on the queen side, but the problem here is that uh, black doesn't have a concrete target anyway. At least it's hard to create a concrete target, so we can imagine something like this transformation that may be fixing that weakness on a3, and it would be ideal to, you know, switch uh, this piece is and, uh, you know, just attack the a3, but it takes time, black doesn't have so much space. So uh, at some point it starts feeling like black is stuck on the queen side and white has uh, clearer perspectives uh, here on the king side. But anyway, white's attack on the king side is not simple either. And uh, we had a very balanced game, I would say. I lost it only at the very end uh, because of the back calculation. Uh, by the way, uh, Nicholas uh, even um, created a video uh, featuring this game. So he analyzed it in detail. So if you want, you can check out his YouTube channel. Uh, the uh, 
very end of the game was very interesting, instructive and funny. So uh, I would say this is a balanced position more or less, but quite complicated uh, to handle it right if you're not very experienced in maneuvering. Another approach uh, is, uh, in my opinion, also not very active, but uh, it gives you at least a clear target. So let's have a look at that. So at this very moment, instead of playing c4, black may consider taking on d4. And uh, I also considered that move during the game, but I was not satisfied with the result of the knight takes d4. Uh, because if white recaptures with the pawn, everything is clear. Black has this knight to b4 move, and once the bishop goes away, there is bishop a6. Um, and there are also great chances just to exchange these bishops in case it stays somewhere here, for example, like bishop d7. So should be not a problem for black whatsoever. Uh, but what uh, I found not very satisfying is this knight takes d4. So I didn't see a clear way to get rid of my super passive bishop after that. But appears black has an interesting option. So it is knight takes d4, c takes d4, and then just b5. So the idea behind this move is to create some room for pieces on the queen side, especially for the queen. So queen is uh, going to b6 to attack d4, another direction maybe queen a5 check if it is needed. Um, and uh, after something like castling, queen goes to b6 attacking d4, bishop goes to f2 protecting it, and then black plays b4. So that's the whole point behind all of this. With the queen on b6 and uh, uh, a5 played at the right moment, maybe just the next move, black will have no problems with playing bishop to a6, getting rid of the French bishop and basically solving the main problem. Let's have a look at uh, one of the games. So rook went to c1, a5, queen to c2, bishop to a6, bishop captures, queen captures, queen gets to c6. So as you can see, uh, white has the advantage uh, in the sense of the activity of heavy pieces but black's bishop is better than that one, and black's only uh, serious weakness is e6, which is not so hard to protect. So rook c8 was played, queen captured on a6, rook captured on c1 was check. After this exchange, black recaptured on a6, and as I said, there is no problem for black to uh, hold this position. Black even tried uh, to uh, get a bit more active uh, position a bit later in this game, but uh, at the end it was uh, anyway balanced and the game ended in a draw. So this is slightly passive, but in my opinion just enough uh, if you want to equalize chances without much risk. There is another option though, so uh, black can accept the sacrifice on d4 and to try to survive under the attack, and if it happens, black is having the extra material. So let's have a look at that option as well. So black captures on d4 and white starts the attack after h4. In this case, uh, it's better to have the bishop uh, around the king, so bishop e7 is not so good for that purpose, so bishop h6 should be the choice of black. So here we don't have a strict theory, as I said, this position requires additional analysis and more practice to make a final conclusion. So I wanted to show you just uh, one successful example of the uh, defense from black's perspective. So uh, white continued with the h5, black captured on c3, and after b captured on c3, bishop went to g7. So now as you can see, this bishop plays an important role, probably uh, the most important role in defending the king, at least for now. Uh, so black will probably have time to complete a development and maybe create some counter threats on the other side of the board. But uh, we should understand that for the nearest future, black's main focus should be the king side anyway, and doing everything to prevent uh, white's direct attack. So that goes to f3. Uh, now white has different ideas. So for example, it may be bishop h4 followed by, say, bishop to f6, exchanging our main defender, or after it will be possible to attack using the dark squares. So uh, black has this universal um, defensive move f5. Again, if uh, white, for example, captures, then it's possible to recapture with the queen, and black starts improving the uh, position of his pieces. As you can see, this queen, for instance, is not only protecting g6, but also attacks the c3 pawn. So 
uh, I don't see uh, why Black's position should be bad in this case. It doesn't feel like White's pieces are really coordinated here. So it makes sense for White to leave that pawn as it is. Uh, e5 is a very important factor here because it controls a lot and actually limits the activity of Black's pieces so that it's not so simple for Black to coordinate the defensive resources around the king. So no surprises White in this example decided to capture on g6 opening the h file and the next stage was to try to do uh, something with a weakened g5 square uh, because h file is not accessible at the moment so what else uh, white just played bishop to f4 uh, with the ideas like knight to g5 and bishop to g5 probably uh, queen went to c7 in advance avoiding this tempo action there and already starting uh, exerting some pressure on c3. So uh, Black's position is getting slightly better. Also pay attention that from this position Queen uh, keeps an eye on e5 pawn, so Black may consider this an object of attack as well, uh, and uh, indirectly uh, takes part in the defense because uh, Queen controls the 7th rank now. White decided to continue with the king f1. It's uh, hard for me to explain this move. Probably uh, White wanted to avoid the check on c3 whenever it comes, uh, but uh, to me this move looks like uh, a waste of time, more or less. Uh, so uh, black continued with the bishop d7, also very logical, continuing with the development. White played queen to e3, getting closer and closer, and pay attention how black uh, maneuvered the knight now. So yeah, it's tempting to start something active against c3, but as I said, uh, white has you know, serious chances on the king side, for example, after queen e3, white wants to play bishop h6, exchange the bishop, and just checkmate the king. So it's important to be ready for the situation when the bishop is missing. That's why black decided to play knight to d8, uh, moving the knight to f7 square, from where the knight will cover same squares as the bishop, in case it's gone. So knight to g5, bishop h6, doesn't really look very promising anymore because of black's knight f7 response and black is fine. So knight to g5, knight went to f7, again trying to simplify position a bit. For instance, if white takes the knight, then king recaptures and the king is safe now and uh, black is ready to counterattack using the h file. So white decided to bring the knight to h7, which looks uh, really dangerous. But after rook to d8, just moving the rook away, we can see that white has a problem. c3 is hanging, e5 is hanging. White tried knight to f6 in this position, but after bishop captures f6, e takes f6, and queen captures on c3, we may notice that black managed to grab one more pawn. f6 is hanging, so after rook to c1 and queen to f6, we can see that white still has some tricks here, but uh, to be honest, black already has a serious material advantage and all the chances to protect the king um, against white's attack, mainly because of this perfect knight on f7. So that is uh, basically it about the line uh, with e4. Of course, we didn't cover each and every um, sideline here, but uh, you should get a general sensation. So uh, it's not... Uh, the same if we compare it to the previous uh, plan of attack with the knight to e5. So here it's uh, much more dynamic and uh, to play it well with uh, both colors you need a deeper knowledge. Now you have a good starting point I believe so learn it deeper, practice it and get good results. Thanks for watching and see you in the next videos.